What's up dudes and dudes to the urna, my name's Seth and today we're going to be taking a look at Planet Nomad. Oh yes, it's another one of these open world random generation voxel games, even though it doesn't really look like it's all voxels and stuff like that. But, just to give you an example, you can see you can terraform the environment, you can knock down trees and stuff like that. The game doesn't really do the best job telling you exactly what you're supposed to do, uh, but it is early access, and I have messed around uh, a little bit in uh, the creative mode, uh, but otherwise we're just gonna hang out over here in the main area. You were hurt from the crash landing because we actually came into this pod at the beginning of the game, uh, and we can actually hang out inside it. I don't know whether it actually does anything, but Let's use one of our healing items. Your biometrics in the left bottom of the visor shows you are hungry and thirsty. To fix it, open the inventory. Hungers and thirsters. Where? Aha! Cool! This is much different than the creative mode I was messing with. Drag and drop the purified water and nutrition uh, capsules from your inventory to the hot bar below. Uh, you can hover over items to see their name, effect, and description. So this is going to be the purified water. Bloop! And then that's a battery, which is compact energy source for use with multi-tools and weaponry, because this game also has a lot of references to No Man's Sky. I don't know if they did that necessarily on purpose, uh, but just kind of like exploring the environment and the way that your character controls and stuff just kind of feels the same way, right? Sleeping bag for resting in the wild grants basic protection and not very comfortable rest, but it will do the job one use only. We've got a couple of them, thank goodness, because otherwise we are going to die. Bloop! Let's drink our water, and let's eat our foodses. This is how you keep yourself alive. To create more food, you have to gather, forage, and turn it into edible food. Sign me up. Where do I actually do that? To do that, you first need a shelter. Let's start with that. I like how this game actually has a tutorial, even though I said I didn't really have much of an idea of what to do. Okay, uh, so you build a, a build vision and augmented reality. Uh, press tab, and then you go into build mode. Okay, and then we're going to have building blocks in our inventory. Uh, drag and drop the emergency 3D printer, which the 3D printer is an emergency 3D printer of last resort. Can be built very cheaply and prints basic components needed for further building. So I guess this is like our crafting table, right? So close it. Oh, Open it, and we can plop that sucker on the ground right there. There we go. Uh, to wield a block into existence, equip the multi-tool with T. And now you can finish the block. Aim at the structure and left mouse button until it has full HP. Aha! So ammo is actually, like, this is our multi-tool. It repairs and everything else, huh? Uh, use the same technique to create more blocks. Note that all blocks require components. You can print them in the 3D printer you just created. Okay. So we can open it, uh, and then we've got, uh, but first you need resources. They can be found around the world inside rocks with metallic veins, uh, trees and stuff like that, I'm assuming. Basic frame, so there's gonna be a basic frame for items and block construction. Uh, and then there's plating mark one, glass components, uh, electronic parts, Composite parts, uh, Mark II, used mostly in passive blocks. So we're gonna need to craft all of this stuff in order to actually carry it with us. Uh, battery is going to end up requiring composite parts. Uh, then there's also going to be sleeping bags, and then there's going to be a crafting time as well, queuing it. Uh, which potentially means that this is gonna be one of those games where you're going to make a zillion 3D printers uh, because you want to like get as many of them as possible, right? Okay, so we need uh, the metallic thing and the other thing in order to actually do this. So let's take a peek and see what ends up happening if we end up destroying these rocks. At least it does have a nice little meter to show how long it's going to take. Uh, it can be loaded with batteries and increases its efficiency and stops depleting suit energy. Press R to reload. Let's do that right now. Oh, I see. 70 out of 140. You can craft more batteries at the 3D printer la uh, or later in armories, along with battery multi- or better multi-tools, jetpacks and suits and stuff like that, so you actually have a little bit more to the player progression, which I very, very much like, for sure. And we're actually getting lots and lots of resources out of this. I do like how we're actually shaping the environment, too. Like, that's really, really cool. It's too bad we're gonna be spending most of our time actually just looking at rocks and stuff. You can craft more batteries in the 3D printer or later in armories, that's the same tip that I just told us two seconds ago. Uh, but it would be nice if we could actually, like, go out and explore the world a little bit more. Because otherwise, yeah, we're probably just going to be spending most of our time just gathering resources, right? So let's just mine all of this right here. 
uh, and then see whether or not this is going to end up being enough for us. I'm also kind of curious whether or not there is even stuff in the environment, like bad creatures and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm kind of scared about all of that. Um, but we'll, let, let me mine uh, the rest of this rock right here. Also, what happens if we end up mining trees? Man alive. Trees take a long time to mine, or at least this one does. Timber! I do like that it's actually falling over, but it didn't really fall over properly because the branches all stayed and everything like that. Oh, well, that's okay. So what happens if, okay, so the first one is going to end up do we even have enough ammo for this? Oh, I see. So our ammo with our multi-tool is pretty much one second for every time that we're actually using it. Did we even get anything or did we just break that apart? I don't know. Can we do it even if we have no ammo? Yes, we can. It's just it's going to take a lot longer. Okay, let's forget about all of that because the night cometh. I don't like how the night is showing up in this game. Like, seriously. So they want us to craft... Oh, we need iron. Um, common uh, occurrence used in most blocks. Okay. Where, where does one actually get iron? We have, like, everything but iron. Is iron, like, underground or something? Or is that some of it over here? Is that what this is? I don't like how the nighttime is starting to show up already, dude. Like, really. Carbon and iron. And lots of iron as well. Okay, that's good. Why does it keep... Oh, so we actually, in the bottom left, need to wait for our, um, multi-tool to recharge. It's actually a meter around our health bar. Ooh! Now, the nighttime's pretty uggles in this game, folks. Just a heads up, it's not really gonna make for good YouTube. I don't know why devs, uh, that make games like this are obsessed with making the nighttime disgustingly dark. Basic frame now, complete left mouse button and click and move it, um, to what? Move it to your inventory? What? There we go. Ew, inventory management is definitely going to be a very big thing, isn't it? Uh, this concludes the basic tutorial. I need to know more than that, dude. <laughs> like, seriously, don't leave me alone. Not yet. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Well, you know what? Let's just put that down. What the? What? Is it? Oh, is it because we didn't use our multi-tool to fix it? Aha, that's what's going on. Congratulations, it's saying again. I, I You already said that. Is this working? Not enough resources. Well, what resources do I need, man? Like, seriously. Okay, where? What do we need? Three of those metallic things. Oh, two, three. There we go. That's a bit of a slow, clunky process, if I do say so. Let's just uh, build ourselves a floor, and then I'll try and use the sleeping bag and see if it actually works <laughs> it's still pretty cool though for sure dude like i like it uh it's just because of the type of game that it is it's uh, a bit slower paced uh than you would normally expect right okay okay where's my sleeping bag okay so we can make an fad machine which makes food and drink processes raw food and drinks turning them into hazard free nutrients requires electricity and apparently a million resources. Oh boy, compact container, a storage block, it's small size limits something- Stop telling me I completed the tutorial! So this would just be for storage, uh, and then you can always filter through all of this stuff, and I guess as you go further along, uh, do we have to actually reach a certain point before we can end up using these things? Or is it just that we haven't, uh, crafted the proper components yet, uh, for us to actually do all of this? I guess that's the case. What happens if we go to this crazy build mode? Oh, I see this, right? Because otherwise we're just in the normal mode. Well then, that's cool. Uh, le let me go to- where's my normal inventory? Oh, there it is, that's right. So let's put our sleeping bag on. What? Sleep for 12 hours to replenish stamina and health. Yes, please. Blah. I like how he's just dead. Um... Are we good, or is real time passing? Ugh. What time is it right now? That was not 12... That was not 12 hours. If it was 12 hours, it would be the daytime, dude. I want to sleep again. Can I use another sleeping bag so it's not so dark and gross? Ah, jeez. Well, you know what? Let's go exploring together a little bit here, folks, in the darkness. Uh, and then maybe we'll actually hop over to a creative world. 
so that I can kind of show you some of the other stuff that I've actually discovered. I don't know what I just destroyed right there. Radiation poisoning, excuse me? Did I just get radiated? Well, at least we can get this delicious wheat on an alien world. How, what, what happens if we dig? Do we get anything? I don't, I don't think so. Oh, we did actually get a little bit of carbon there. Uh, so our compass is always gonna end up pointing to the, uh, to our drop pod as well, by the way. So you can kind of go out and explore a little bit while also having a very good understanding of where your base actually is. Doesn't look like there's any creatures just yet, dude. Huh. That's an iron deposit. Pretty cool. But what, what is the goal? Help me. Like, what do I do? Wait, you are a creature. Die, bug! Whoa! I don't know what's happening. He's jumping up in my face, which is the worst type of enemy that you could ever expect to fight in a game like this. Excuse me, I came and hit him. Stay still! That's an annoying enemy type. That shouldn't be at the beginning of the game. I'm gonna run for it. Let's just get out of here. Did we lose him? We lost him. Whew! Okay, so there are creatures in this game. Can we sleep? Why can't I sleep? Oh my goodness gracious, our character gets so thirsty. I gotta try and find some water so that I can help myself and heal up. Use a sleeping bag, you idiot. You have to left. Kay doesn't want to. I mean, I hop to creative because I want to show y'all uh, a couple more things here. So as you load up the game from the title screen, you can go to creative mode or survival, grab your survival equipment, and learn to thrive in an alien world full of unknowns. And apparently there are crazy cr creatures as well. Let your imagination go wild with unlimited resources and stuff. Okay. Bloop. This is that crazy drop pod sequence at the beginning, which is cool. But it's like our screen is shaking and you know that there's not actually anything going on. I, I also would love to see if there was a way to adjust our field of view. Because that, that generally is just something like I like having a big field of view so that I can actually see what's going on. But it means that the game has to compensate for it. Okay, so we've got the same world generation. Ah, it's lush, it's bright, it's beautiful. Why can't it just be day all the time? Like seriously? But I want to show you we got conveyor belt systems. Uh, there's a med bay. You know, there's staircases that you can use. Reinforced walls and stuff. Uh, railings. You can really customize your base and get some pretty crazy stuff going on. Uh, these are the equivalent of torches pretty much in this game. So pretty cool that they actually have these things, dude. Uh, and then also there's going to be uh, a lot of things in the game that require electricity. So for example, Let's actually take a couple of these right here, and I think where, where's the battery? Is this the battery combat con or compact container? Okay. Um, there's also light switches and stuff like that. Stasis chamber requires electricity as well. Uh, so let's go to energy and take a compact battery, uh, and then we'll also construct a little vehicle here, just because I want to show you how that all ends up working out, because it's pretty cool. So that's going to be our little storage container, but it requires power. So that's what we do to put down power, is this thing right here. So what we gotta do is we go up to this bad boy, and we go to connect electricity. Bloop, and a bloop. And there we go, we've got it all set up. So now we should, we're supposed to be able to do things with this. What do we actually do with this? Isn't that a storage container? I don't know, maybe maybe it's not. Maybe I ended up selecting the wrong thing. What is this? Oh, this is the thing that processes food and drinks and stuff. Okay, and then there's going to be our bed system, which I don't exactly know how you use this. Maybe you can't use it in creative mode, but I think the whole point of this hyper, uh, like, chamber, hibernating chamber right here is the fact that you could use it in the single player uh, to actually like pass time and stuff like that, right? So anyways, let's get into not the interior, even though there is some really cool stuff. You can uh, have indoor lights and all, all sorts of crazy customization. It's really, really cool. Uh, but let's actually try to construct a vehicle right here. So you're gonna have to have all of the basic things and springs and stuff like that. Scrap Mechanic is a game that uh, has pretty much the exact same 
like building system uh, with the vehicles, but it's a little bit more intuitive in that game. Uh, not not to say like against this one or anything, but I'm just kind of getting a point across. So let's grab that one right there. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put the jack down uh, so that you can end up putting the vehicle on top of it. And then we can actually just edit the vehicle while we're still while it's still actually up in the air. Right. So the part of the game that can be a little bit t uh, tedious, which I wish was a little bit more automatic, but that's OK, is like you can see the different rotations of the tires, which means that you do have the option to kind of customize them uh, quite a bit, but we're going to end up putting the steering on right here, and then we hop into the cockpit. Let's hit left and then hit right. Okay, so that means that we have to actually set this tire up to steer in the, yeah, in the opposite direction from this tire uh, so that they're actually both going the exact same way. Oh, they are not going the same way at all. Why does it say that they were doing the same thing? Bloop, there we go. So now these tires are both spinning the right way and they are both, oh, so you have to put the steering on the front of it. My bad, I thought that I had to put it on the back. So anyways, then you could also crazy customize your vehicle uh, just by using all of the blocks and stuff like that. And of course, you know, getting to this uh, great uh, tier of vehicle in the uh, single player game would definitely end up taking a very, very long time to actually attain and get to, but hey, whatever. So let's just do this. And then you can see this one generated where the direction of the tire was wrong. Uh, you can also change the speed of them as well. We have them actually selected to regular speed. And then, of course, last but not least, whoop, oh, I don't know where our character is. We're going to have to set up power. So let us actually connect electricity. Bloop, 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 bloop. And then there, you know, you can always put uh, headlights on the front of it as well. Honestly speaking, folks, I did actually mess around with these headlights and, and put switches on them and everything like that. But generally, I don't think that these things actually emit light. Maybe it's something in the options. I, I don't know. Whoopsie-daisy, I always forget to get rid of this thing that's down here. Can you do it? Can you get rid of it? There we go. Okay. The menu itself is a little bit clunky. But hey, that's okay. It works fine. Woo! And let's just drive out of here. I don't know if there's spaceships or maybe they're planning to add spaceships and stuff. Pretty cool that it's actually like all first person and everything. Uh, and I'm guessing that as we would end up going out and exploring a little bit, which I'm going to try and do right here. Uh, is there going to end up being different biome types and stuff like that? Hopefully there would actually end up being like uh, different bases that you could raid and stuff because even though I think this game is more going towards the whole survival thing for myself personally I always prefer games like this. Yes, that end up having a lot of uh, pre-generated structures and stuff like that, not only just for the lore aspect so that the world feels a little bit more fleshed out rather than you having to be the one that does everything yourself, uh, which is just a personal preference of mine, but also because I like going out and adventuring and completing dungeons and stuff like that, because otherwise for stuff like this, if we're gonna be doing all this survival, you know, uh, there, Minecraft is definitely a much more user-friendly version of this same game, but maybe that's the whole point, you know? Maybe the whole point is that you want to actually have a game that's a little bit more intense and a little bit more extreme, like this one would definitely be, right? Which, I mean, you saw that bug creature we were fighting. That was the most deadly creature known to man, just because of the fact that we couldn't actually attack it very well. Okay, so what I want to try and do, let's set all these wheels to fast speed. Yeah, this ought to this ought to really crank things up. And then we're going to drive for a few uh, for a little bit more here and see if we can actually find something cool. Oh no. Is our battery dead? Or is it because we started going uphill and these wheels aren't particularly good and they take like 5 years to actually like get power or something? Do any of these meters on our screen mean anything? I don't think that they do. Okay, yep, our vehicle seems to have a very, very hard time climbing uphill. So you know what? Let's use that to our advantage. And let's just go downhill then. That'll that'll give us some nice movement speed. Oh great, the nighttime's coming already. Why can't the nighttime be as short as the day? I mean, I know it's because when you start your original file, the world is loading up kind of at midday, so that's why the nighttime ends up showing up real quick. But still, I think in survival games like this, especially when the nighttime is just pitch black and annoying, it's like, 
the nighttime should be at 0 0.5 uh, the daytime's like time of day stuff, right? Ooh! That's cool. Can we drive underwater? Let's find out. I know that we can swim. Oh. I don't know if we're necessarily driving underwater, but it did end up working, so that's actually pretty cool. Maybe there actually would be, like, kind of underwater fleshed out uh, a little bit further down the line with this game. That would be pretty darn cool, dude. It's kind of like a indie version of Ark, I guess, or something. What if we get out of our vehicle? Yeah, that actually stops it faster than we can with our own brakes. So you can end up building your base on the back of this thing. You'd have to recharge your battery as you go out and explore and stuff like that. But otherwise, yeah, it's pretty cool. Thanks so much for watching, though, everybody. That's all the time we have for today. Links are going to be in the description for everything, and otherwise, I would very much appreciate if you would like, share, favorite, and subscribe for more daily content. Say I know and stay epic, everybody.